Sayonara, suckers! Hello everybody, it's Ginger on Wheels here for the most exciting video that I think I've done in over a year. Today we're going to be showcasing the Wolf King GT Pro from Voro Motors. This scooter is the product of four generations of upgrades on what was already the beastliest scooter of 2019. I'm really excited to show you around the scooter today, so let's roll the intro and get into it. All right, yes, this is an electric scooter. And yes, it's one of the fastest ones around. This thing is absolutely insane, as you can see. We've got 29 inch wide handlebars, a thumb throttle, pure sine wave controllers, a TFT display, two 2000 watt motors, and a 72 volt, 35 amp hour battery. This thing is one of the more powerful scooters I've ever tested. It's right next to the Wii Pad in terms of torque, and I honestly am blown away by this thing. Com comparing it to my Wolf 11 Plus and the Wolf King is not even fair. This thing is an absolute beast of a scooter. You can see the gold paint here. It's got a really nice aesthetic. It has a set of the beastliest headlights I know of on any scooter. It's got some underglow lights that I can show you from the dark. Right now we're rocking the 11 inch knobby tires on front and back so we can tackle off-road and puddles. This thing's not very water resistant, which is a little bit concerning, but this is about as dry as it gets in the Pacific Northwest in the winter time. It's got completely blacked out tail lights, 160 millimeter full hydraulic disc brakes on the front and back. Huge shout out to Vora Motors for sending me this thing for review. There are a very few number of these things in the world. So let's get this thing started and hop on and I'll show you what it's like to ride this thing. All right, safety gear. Very, very important on this scooter. Don't ride this thing without a full face. All right, so to turn the thing on, there's a little button on the back side of this module here, and you hold that for a couple of seconds, and you'll get your TFT display. It takes a couple seconds to boot up, but once it does, you get your speedometer, you get the speed mode, battery percentage. If you're in single or dual motor mode, you get your voltage of the battery. We've got some trip specs here. If we click the mode button, we can see stats for the front and rear motors. It'll tell you the temperature, if there's any errors, and how much current is flowing to the motors. Huge, huge upgrade from any scooter I've ever ridden. The Wii Pad doesn't even have a display. It doesn't even have a speedometer. So when you turn the scooter on, so to make sure you don't kill yourself, it starts out in speed mode one every time, and it will forget what speed you're in when you start the scooter up every time. Speed mode one is very slow, as you can see. I think the top speed is around 13 miles an hour. Very manageable. Ultra pillowy suspension on this thing, as most Wolves are when they're new. And the best part about the scooter, in my opinion, is the sine wave controllers. They're dead quiet. The tires are the only thing you can actually hear on this scooter, and they are quite loud. Sounds like a chainsaw at high speed. Let's open this puppy up on the road. This is speed mode two, for the record. This little graph right here will show you your power output. I had a few complaints about the thumb throttle at first. When I was first unboxing the scooter, I just found a hard time getting used to it. And as you may have saw on the start of the video, I already have almost 100 miles on this scooter and I just got it a few days ago. But I did get used to the thumb throttle pretty quickly. Okay, this is not what the Wolf King GT Pro is for. Let's pop this bad boy in the road. I'm flipping it into speed mode five right now. Single motor, mind you. Here we go. You can hear those tires ripping away. Got a solid 40 miles an hour in single motor mode when the UPS guy pulls out in front of you. Nice, nice. It does have electronic brakes. One of the more unique assets of this scooter is that you can set parameters for each speed mode. So I can tell it how much uh, e-brake and how much torque I want in like speed mode three. And then for speed mode four, I can switch it to something totally different. 43 miles an hour right now in single motor mode. <laughs> the scooter does have turn signals, so I'll hit that as I go around this corner. Let's pull over for a second. I'll show you what they look like. They're really sweet. And we can get the verdict once and for all if you can actually see these things in the daytime. So I've got my right blinker on now. You can kind of see it in the rear tail light there, which is blacked out. This is blacked out too, but you can see it. It's much more visible at night though. It's not like the V-Set where it has a timed turn signal. You actually click this to turn it on and click it to turn it off. It's pretty nice. It's got a horn. It's got front headlights like I told you earlier. And those things are beast at night. God, this thing's crazy. Single motor mode. <laughs> it's violent. So let's click the mode button here and you can see the stats for the front and rear motor. 
Let's see if you can watch the amperage and the temperature go up as I gun it here in, in uh, single motor mode in speed mode five. Looks like we're at 39 degrees Celsius on the rear motor, pushing 52 amps, 43 degrees. And this is really nice. You can monitor your temperature to make sure you're not overheating things. And if you do, there's an error section on the screen that'll show you what error the motor's throwing. Woo, baby. I've got the e-brake function set pretty high in speed mode five here to try and help me recoup some of the battery. These motors suck battery out of this pack like a wide mouth straw. It is insane. At full throttle, you can expect about 20 minutes of scooter. Let's flip it into dual motor mode and see if we can make this light. Oh God. Did you see that? You saw that. Wow. The thing is, you didn't feel that. You gotta buy this thing to, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't even describe to you what that feels like. <sighs> well, I can. Have you ever been on a roller coaster that just launches you? That's what that's like. It's 40 degrees and I'm still sweating. If you're looking for an adrenaline rush, this is your scooter. This is your scooter. So I've got it in dual motor mode right now in speed mode five, and I cannot keep the front tire on the ground if I pin it. Like every other scooter, you can lean over the front of the bars and put some weight on the front tire and kind of keep it down. But this thing, with the combination of 100 amps of output and two 2000 watt motors, it's just impossible. Like, you can't. You can hear that front tire spinning out, it is impossible. Wildly dangerous. God. Yeah, we're going back into single. It's actually dangerous in dual motor mode. It, it passes the threshold of like fun and exciting and adrenaline rush and goes all the way up to just lethal. Plus in dual, you're gonna wear your front tire out faster. I've got the off-road knobblies, like I said before, which is not helping my traction situation at all, but they're so much more fun. I know of some off-roady sections down here. We're gonna see how this thing does off-road. All right, I'm gonna give it a whirl in dual motor speed three. I think it's limited to 30 amps for the front and rear motors. Rocking the off-road knobblies, like I said earlier, it's kind of muddy. Don't want to go too fast around corners here. Could you imagine crashing a $4,000 e-scooter on the maiden voyage? I couldn't. Woo! -hoo! I love this thing so much. Try and do this on a wee pad. Wee pad will bottom out on the littlest log. I gotta get down to uh, Oak Harbor so I can ride with Scoot the Harbor down there. He's got a YouTube channel and he owns the Nami Bernie. We got plans to race this thing in like a week, so stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel and you can see us totally go top speed on these scooters. All right, we couldn't get going very fast on that off-road because it's really deep bark and kind of wet. So let's try this gravelly path here. Gotta watch for cars pulling out of the driveways. Keep your head on a swivel when you're riding e-scooters. This thing is crazy. <laughs> you can just hear the front tires skipping off the ground. It's too much in dual, you guys. It's actually too much scooter. I'm gonna go back to single. I'm gonna flip it up to speed mode five. It's just an unmanageable amount of torque as it sits right now. As I was saying earlier, one of the cool things you can do about the scooter is adjust the output for the front and rear motors independently of each other. So what I'm gonna do when I get home, I think, set this thing up for speed mode five so I have full torque in the rear and then like half in the front. And I think that'll be much more manageable. And the ability to do that is just a huge upgrade over any scooter. Let's go for top speed, screw it. As I said, it's about 42, 43 degrees out right now, so affecting the battery a lot. My current weight is 200 pounds. Also, the off-road nut tires on this thing, they really do suck about 10 or 15% of the top speed and range out of the scooter. And we just got up to 56 miles an hour. 56 miles an hour, really? If it's street tires and it was warm out and I was crouched, I could easily see 65 on this thing. Wowzers, just wow. 
And the best part, after doing that, I've still got 90% battery. The sine wave controller acceleration is so smooth and quiet, I love it. You could just kind of tell on the other Wolfs, the motors themselves are so loud that that's just a, an inefficient use of battery. You're, you're wasting battery to generate noise and heat instead of speed. But on this thing, they're so much quieter and cooler. The old Wolf 11 Plus would overheat in rear motor mode if you were going too fast, and this thing's got no issues. That just doesn't feel legal, and it isn't. So I'm gonna stop doing that on the road. <laughs> let's, let's see what it's like down here. Some single trackiness. Extra slippery from that mud. It's been raining for the last few weeks here. Pretty much every day, hence the lack of videos. Oh yeah, sine wave controllers. I can just hold the throttle nice and smooth over these bumps. Completely in control here. Giant downhill. Clicking on that e-brake a little bit, trying to get some battery back. And a huge steep uphill here. Let's, let's watch how fast we can go up this thing. Just no problem, just beasts right up. There are so many, actually only one other scooter I know of can make it up that hill. That thing just busted up it in like half throttle. When I initially unboxed this thing, I was very skeptical that they'd upgraded the suspension, but I'm not so sure now. It feels a little bit smoother than the other Wolves. And it might just be my imagination because the scooter is new and these, the suspension does break down after a while, but the out of the box experience is very pleasant. I can just send it around off road, no problems. Totally confident right now. This thing is just a beast. Off road, on road, bike trails, on the moon, you name it. This thing will do it. It just feels good riding this thing. It feels so solid. The taller, wider bars are definitely a huge upgrade on this thing. For me especially, I'm six foot two, so I really do appreciate the tall, wider bars. All right, here's a nice straightaway on a 50 mile an hour road. Let's see what our top speed actually is. I'll crouch down for you anyway. Front tire spins out up to 30 miles an hour. guys in that car. Is that an e-scooter? Yeah, that's an e-scooter. All right, I'm slowing down before I kill myself. Front and rear motor temperature, 59 degrees Celsius. Not even anywhere near, a oh, that's a unicycle. That's a unicycle. Is that Max? I see you, you see. Where do you think you're going? Not today, buddy. Not getting away from me. Don't go this fast on the sidewalk. Do as I say, not as I do. I'm pretty sure that's Max though. What's going on? Oh, I know, dude. I saw you installed those LED yeah. lights on there. Those things are sweet. I could see those from a mile off. I was like, <laughs> that's, that's totally <laughs> Max. That thing's really cool looking. I like the it's, it's insane, man. I'm testing it out right now. Nice. The emoji where your mind's just blowing out of the top of your skull, totally accurate. I just got it up to 60. Right, going down, going down the street here. Nice. That's when I saw you. I was like, "That's an EC." I'm like, it's pretty uncommon for me to be tailgated on the sidewalk. <laughs> somebody I know. Where are you headed? Work. Yeah. Work. Fair enough. Right. Well, have fun riding, dude. I'm gonna keep doing my video. Right. It's nice seeing you. Yeah. He's one of the local riders in our uh, Outlaw Electrics and Seattle EV Riders groups. Super cool guy. I'll link his YouTube channel in the description. You should totally check him out. He does a lot of really crazy off-road EUC riding and upgrades. A lot of you guys have asked me in my previous videos, why do you always flick the throttle? And it's because I could never really get a solid response out of the throttle enough to feel comfortable with my, my trigger half pulled. I felt like it was always going to accelerate no matter what. But you don't have to watch me do that anymore with the uh, sine wave thumb throttle here. It's so smooth and predictable. 
Okay, you guys know me, you know my YouTube channel. I'm not just gonna sit around and ride this thing and sugarcoat the entire ride. There is one thing that I found that's wrong with the scooter and I verified it with a multiple other customers online on Facebook. If you have the cruise control on and you have the throttle pinned, as soon as the cruise control is locked and you let go of the throttle, you'll get a sudden burst of speed. It's a completely strange phenomenon that I have no explanation for whatsoever other than just bad programming. This is the uh, first generation of sine wave controllers and I'm guessing they just didn't get it totally right. But let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll put it in speed mode two in single motor mode and watch. This little uh, speedo thingy will turn green when the cruise control is locked. So I'll, I'll floor it here. Slow sine wave acceleration. And then you can see the thing turn green. And we're at 24 miles an hour, 25, 26. Okay, we're still accelerating, this isn't fair. Wait till I get around this corner. So it looks like we're at 29 miles an hour right now. And my thumb's all the way down. I'm gonna let my thumb off the throttle now. And you can see we're accelerating. I can feel the sudden burst of speed. We're going 35 now and it's still accelerating. I gotta slow it down. So my recommendation, if you buy or own this scooter, do not use cruise control at all. It's a completely unpredictable function. Kind of a bummer that they burned that feature. This is an automatic mode for cruise control, mind you. There are two different modes for cruise on this scooter. There's one called manual, where you hold this, the throttle at a certain spot, and then you hold the M button, and it'll lock the speed on for you. And that one seems to work fine. But on the auto cruise control function, like we just saw, Sudden random burst of acceleration as soon as cruise locks on. Not good. And only when you let your thumb off the off the throttle. Just cruising in the road. With the car is absolutely no problem. I love the way it sounds too. It sounds like a freaking chainsaw. Coming to attack your whole family. The scooter just screams, do not mess with me. Speed bump, you say? Oh like speed jump. This is a cool new park they just built. Perfect place to rest up. Well, I wasn't lying, was I? This thing is absolutely crazy. I hope you enjoyed the uh, up close and first hand experience with the Cobble Wolf King GT here. Go check it out at Voro Motors and subscribe to the channel to catch the next ride video. Thanks again for watching.